Hello and welcome to IU NewsNet Daily. I'm Katherine Patterson. And I'm Abby Haymond. Today we tell you how the toxic waste from a train derailment in Ohio could affect Indiana. You'll also hear about some upcoming Women's History Month events. And later Abby gives us an update on IU Athletics. NewsNet Daily begins now. We begin with news of a second significant train derailment in Ohio over the weekend. After a chemically toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio in early February, another train from the same company derailed in Springfield, Ohio Saturday. Officials said the Norfolk Southern train was not carrying toxic chemicals and that the area is safe. The train was headed to Birmingham, Alabama and was pulling 212 cars. This is the fourth train derailment in Ohio in five months, according to ABC News. Following that early February derailment, a landfill located 70 miles from Bloomington agreed to take in some of the East Palestine toxic waste. At a meeting in Putnam County where the landfill is, upset residents questioned the landfill representatives asking why the landfill had previously received violations from the Environmental Protection Agency. The concern is that chemicals from the landfill could leak and pollute the groundwater. It's just a knee-jerk reaction that we all saw there tonight um, to the fear that their kids are going to be impacted, maybe they themselves are going to be impacted. Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb has expressed his opposition to some of the waste leaving Ohio for Indiana. Last Tuesday, the U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments for and against President Joe Biden's student loan debt relief plan. It has some students wondering what's next. Pro hundreds of protesters gathered outside the court last week. The court likely will not come to a decision until early summer. The justices heard two separate lawsuits, both arguing there was unlawful overreach by the Biden administration's use of executive action. Because of its conservative majority, Biden conceded last week that he does not expect the Supreme Court to uphold the debt relief plan. Indiana's statewide tornado siren test will be happening a week from today. According to an IU press release, tornado sirens will sound across the state at 10.15 in the morning as part of Indiana's severe weather preparedness week. When the drill occurs, IU students and staff should expect an IU notify emergency alert at the same time as the sirens. Everyone is encouraged to participate in the test by practicing tornado emergency response. This is Women's History Month, and there are multiple opportunities on and around campus to celebrate. The Monroe County History Center is putting on a production called Remarkable Women Writing the Wrongs, bringing to life the stories of the black female writers. The IU Cinema is screening the movie All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, a documentary about female artist and activist Nan Golden. And the City of Bloomington's Commission of the Status of Women will be hosting a Women's History Month luncheon focusing on celebrating women who tell our stories, which recognizes women past and present who work in the media industry. You can find more events at visitbloomington.com. And now speaking of women in the media, Abby is here to tell us what's going on with Hoosier Athletics. That's right, Catherine. IU basketball is again our top story, including Senior Day at Assembly Hall. Indiana men's basketball played their final game of the regular season at home in Assembly. Seniors Race Thompson led the team in rebounds and Trace Jackson Davis led the team in scoring for their last game ever in Assembly. In the first half, IU led the Wolverines by as many as 14. However, the Hoosiers' inconsistencies showed in the second half. Michigan turned things around and led the Hoosiers by as many as 12. But Indiana was not going to let it end like that. With one minute left in the game, Jalen Huchifino sunk a three to tie things up, eventually sending the teams to overtime. The Hoosiers held on and defeated Michigan 75-73. This victory secured a double bye in this week's Big Ten Conference Tournament, something Indiana has not had in seven years. And for more on the emotional senior night in Assembly Hall, here's Tyler Vondry. Thank you, Abby. One of IU's all-time greats played his last game in Assembly Hall this past weekend. Trace Jackson Davis put on the Cream and Crimson one last time Sunday in front of a sold-out arena in Bloomington, an overtime win over Michigan. Jackson Davis put up 27 points and 9 rebounds in the win over the Wolverines. It has been a decorated career for the Greenwood, Indiana native. 
TJD is top 10 in rebounds, blocks, and field goal percentage in IU program history. And since the 2019-2020 season, he is first in the Big Ten in scoring, blocks, free throws made, and attempted. Sunday might have been the last time TJD played in Assembly Hall, but with the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament around the corner, he will look to lead the Hoosiers and continue to improve on his already historic IU career. Abby, back to you. Thanks, Tyler. Well, we often talk about the men's and women's basketball teams here, but there's one more you may not know about. The wheelchair club at IU gives people the opportunity to play the sport they love while spreading awareness for those with disability. Bloomington community members with or without disabilities are welcome to join the club. Local veterans, homeschooled students, students from community colleges, and IU students have been a part of the team since it was founded in 2017. Daisy Smith, the club's current president, says, quote, It's a happy, healthy, social group that is an inclusive opportunity for recreation at IU and for the community in Bloomington. The team has started competing recreationally again recently, so make sure you stay on the line to support IU's third basketball team. It's so awesome to see people with disabilities and without spreading awareness and getting to play the sport they love, which is basketball. Yes, absolutely. And it just looks like so much fun. Yes, like it just looks so much fun definitely. to be able to join that type of community. Well, that's a wrap for today's IU NewsNet Daily. Tune in for the latest updates on all Hoosier news and sports. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at IUNND. For IU NewsNet Daily, I'm Katherine Patterson. And I'm Abby Heyman. Thanks for watching, and we will see you tomorrow.